Today I thought we'd look at this scooter. It belongs to a sweet young lady that goes to our church and she said she had had some good times with it, but they had lost the charger. The batteries are probably beyond their useful life cycle, but maybe we can look inside of it and uh, see what it needs. Maybe it's worth uh, looking to the batteries, getting a charger for it. See if there's anything we can find electrically wrong with it and to see if we can get it back in operation for. So this just unplugs and the switch, it's actually a resettable circuit breaker. It actually went through the negative back in series, the positive back to the circuit breaker. So if something happened internally, the circuit breaker would open up and actually break the circuit. So with them connected together, you get your 24 volts here. So we'll get this on the bench and we'll take a little bit closer look at it. So with the batteries on the bench, we can uh, check the voltage. Make sure that they hadn't got too far to zero. Just been in storage for quite a while. 6.4 volts. And under five volts on that one. So what I can do is carefully monitor where my power supply hooked up and uh, see if the batteries will hold a charge. I'll be right back after I hook the power supply up. We'll see how it does. So with the batteries being pulled down to way below half volts, close to half voltage, about a third of a voltage, it was apparent that the batteries are probably discharged beyond savable but at least the one that had six volts on it, I got it hooked up to right at 14 volts of charge. And as we can see, we only have like 20 milliamps showing on the battery. So very little charging on the battery. So at this point, it looks like we're gonna have to have new batteries as well as a, a new charger. So the next step to me for the little scooter is actually hook up a 24 volt supply and just verify that that it really will run and everything's okay with it and that it's worth spending the, uh, you know, the money on the batteries and the, uh, the charger for it. So we'll hook up the 24 volts. We'll, we'll see if the scooter actually work if the motor turns and the uh, electronic speed control actually uh, still works on the scooter. Well, we'll have to look into the speed control and see, and, and, uh, see why the speed control isn't putting that to the motor. Or if it is, is it the motor brushes? So we'll be back and get into it a little deeper. What we can do is be careful and take our 24 volts, go to our amp readout. We can go straight across our motor or with our um, buck regulator uh, power supply. And it does, it does run. So that was um, extremely weak, but uh, I did have a limit on the current to one amp. So it limited that current. I'm gonna go to around three amps. And we'll watch the current. It should take off a lot faster. It runs less than an amp anyway, so that's good. That's with no load, of course, but we do need to clean the chain up and oil it. Some things we can do to uh, to make it more efficient when it's being ridden. But um, 
For now, we'll actually have to go into this a little deeper and take out the speed control or the uh, relay and actually see why it's not putting out to the motor. That's our power switch. We gotta take the uh, leads off the power switch. That lets the 24 volts feed in. Need to clean up some corrosion on that. One of these goes to the brake switch. We can hear it click. And the other one goes to the actual rotary um, motor control for the speed. Very, very bad corrosion. Looking a lot better after soaking in some vinegar. Vinegar will help clean a lot of that corrosion. We just got to get the vinegar off afterwards with some high percentage uh, alcohol afterwards to make sure we get all the residue off of the vinegar because it, it itself can be corrosive too so or it is corrosive we've cleaned really good with vinegar and the corrosion looks a lot better now it's time to get the residue of the vinegar off with some high percentage alcohol. So now after the board's been cleaned, um, of corrosion the best we can with vinegar and then the vinegar residue cleaned off with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Under the microscope we can see there's a lot of corrosion still around a few terminals so the best way to, to go forward from here is just re-solder those terminals with a lot of corrosion and I'm going to put some of this flux on there and I'm just going to re-solder those that'll help get rid of a lot of corrosion. Because the new float, the new flux will help clean and get rid of a lot of those impurities on there. does have a little bit of a coating on there as well. So back now with the board corrosion cleaned up in the solder joints Resoldered on the bad solder joints. Want to retest the board before I put it back together. I have a 24 volt supply coming off to the battery terminals, like the battery supply. I have a current set point of about 2.3 amps, so it'll give a give a good bit of current to be able to start. So the output's 24 volts. Showing a current. We can hear our relay click in as before. 
But now as I try to, to get the, uh, the motor started, we'll see the board to kick in now. So, there you go. So it seems like the board is working now. The actual relays on the board's pulling in. After it sense of movement, I can't remember. It's, it's something like about three miles per hour worth of rotation to give it a kick start. So just hitting the button on this E100 scooter at least. Um, I don't know about all the Razor scooters, but I know the E100, just clicking the button doesn't start the motor. I thought it might start in slow and then get fast, but um, I thought it may have been like a kick start, but you gotta give it a push. And it does, so that's how the board's supposed to operate. If it gets that feedback from the motor, then it'll actually um, pick up and start on the motor assist. So that's a win. We got that fixed. Now I'll be back when I when I get in the uh, the replacement batteries and then a replacement charger because she didn't have one. So um, we'll be back when those come in and we'll put it all together and test it out. One thing about these connectors, you do want to make sure that you actually get the tab to go inside and have some resistance to it and it don't just go in between the insulation and barely make contact. So, very easy to plug up. You just need to make sure that um, it does line up on the actual blade and slides in with some resistance and holds good. All these connectors are corrosion free and in good shape. We just have the battery and then the motor. There's our motor connection tied in. And we have our battery. And the batteries are tied back to our circuit breaker. When they come in, we'll be good to go. I also ran this motor with limited current and just 12 volts on it, just really slow. And while I ran it and rotated it, I just put a little bit of oil on it. I had some bar and, bar and chain oil. I just wanted to oil up the chain so I was able to clean it up with a wire brush and then oil it really well. So the, the chain's in really good shape now. So we got our new batteries in. Quick check of the voltage. And we're good. I just have to take the wiring off the old batteries and put them on the new batteries. Putting them in series like they are. Gonna put some heat shrink protection sleeving on the wires. We'll just take a heat shrink tubing and slide over the wires like so. So we, uh, if you don't want to solder these batteries, you can just use a slide on terminal, but um, a soldered connection is a lot better.
do the same thing with the red wire. So now we have our heat shrink on. So back now after cleaning up the uh, the battery terminals, they look a lot better. They cleaned up nice. This is actually um, like an industrial hot glue. So I have some Gorilla Glue here in my hot glue gun. So I'm just going to do the same thing to protect the uh, the terminals of the battery. Silicone will probably work just as well. Back now after the hot glue's dried some. Gonna put some Kapton tape over it just for extra protection over the terminals of the battery. We'll do a quick check with the series connection of the battery. Check our polarity on our plug. See if we got our 24, 25 volts. And we do. Polarity is correct. So we'll put it in. So back now with the batteries. One thing to notice is this tab here keeps the batteries from coming in contact with each other and the other thing to notice is they're actually turned opposite each other or upside down one's upside down so they don't make contact with the terminals even if they did touch but the orientation is this way and then this one faces the opposite way that way that the wires reach back here that's good Plenty of room on our plug. We can take our plug and plug it up. We can bring our black wire, move the motor connector out of the way for just a minute here. Want to make sure that it does go on the blade good. It has a good tight connection. And then we have our red wire. It also comes around. Wanna hook it up. And again, this is going across the circuit breaker. So if anything pulls too much current, it opens up the series circuit of the two batteries. So that's what that does. A charging port. I did order a new UL listed charger that has the LED light and the, the right connector. We're going to verify real quick that it makes up to it. Yep, fits good. Power on. Just making sure that um, not only the throttle works when we give it a kick start, that also the brake has a switch in it. As we uh, noted earlier in the video, the brake actually um, will kill the circuit. So I did put some heat shrink on this bar because the foam uh, didn't hold up too well. The 
keep stand was flopping around so was able to find the spring that should stay up just a quick update on the scooter after replacing the batteries and working on that board with the corrosion and hitting the solder joints and getting a new charger for it we gave it to the young lady and it's been several weeks now she said it's doing fine she's enjoying driving it really sweet about getting it and um so sorry we didn't have video of it actually being ridden but um it just didn't work out but i will have a link down below for the batteries that we used in case anyone's interested in the charger because they just they happen to work out it may be better out there but those are the ones i chose and they seem to work okay also since i since it was one of the first times i used my new um 302 microscope if anybody's interested i'll put a link down below for it as well if you if you're having trouble with the e100 or similar scooter i i hope it helped if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up please like share and subscribe Thanks for watching.